Today on the corner, we're going to do a Troncy hot end upgrade. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's me, Jeff. Welcome back to the corner. This week, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and visit our Troncy XY2 Pro. I'm going to install a V6 hot end. So what I've done is I've printed out these beautiful, beautiful parts here out of Pet G um, from Thingiverse from a user named Zoe Zeleny. Okay, so. There's this upgrade for a V6 for the regular standard Tronxy. Um, and I am going to upgrade this. It also comes with a blower fan. I really like how these pieces all come together. I think it's really nice how they managed to put it all together quite nicely. I'm going to dismantle the hot end. Now I want to use the heater block and the nozzle still. And I'm going to attach it to this V6 heat sink. And this is going to be my new hot end for this. I also have a blower fan that I need to, I'm going to attach to this model as well. So hopefully get a little bit better cooling on here. But first I got to warm up my trunk seat because I got to take out the Bowden tube and stuff. So. so starting this process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the zip ties to give me a little bit of uh, room and just to loosen everything out. So I kind of know where all my wires go. My next task, I'm going to have to try to remove the Bowden tube. So um, you should be able to pull this out. If you can't, you can always loosen the coupler. And then you should be able to remove the entire Bowden tube like uh, I'm about to do right here. I'm loosening it up and I should be able to pull it straight out, which I did. Don't make the mistake that I did. Um, try to uh, remove your filament first before you remove the Bowden tube then you can move on I moved on to the fan on the side this is the one that you're going to replace with the blower so it's basically you're just going to try to trace where the wires go and then you're just going to plug the blower in to the um, there's a small breakout board by the extruder or by the yeah by the extruder that you're going to have to take the cover off and then you'll find um, just trace this wire pull it out and then plug in your fan there be careful of the continuity you want positive to positive and negative to negative so i'm going to remove the um, leveling sensor now and you want to try and keep all the screws from the, um, the disassembly because you will need those to reassemble as well as you'll need various other m3 screws so as I have advised in my other videos, be sure to buy yourself. It's a worthwhile investment to get yourself a kit of assorted M3 screws or just assorted M2s, M3s, M4s, and M5s. They'll always come in handy when you're working on your printers. So now I'm removing the, um, the shroud around the hot end. And you have your cooling fan inside this shroud. Uh, it's attached by two screws, I believe. You're going to want to take that out at some point in time during the disassembly because you will need it for the reassembly. At this point in time, now I have the hot end exposed. So I'm going to loosen, crack the nozzle because I want to use the, um, the heat block, which already has the uh, thermostat and the, um, the heater attached to it. Now, little did I know as I'm doing this disassembly that um, these, I have not touched these since I bought the printer and they're actually, they weren't even screwed in tight. They weren't even screwed in period. They just were quite loose. And as you can see by what I'm about to do here, I literally, I haven't unscrewed them or anything. I'm just about to uh, pull them directly out. So it's a good tip for you. If you have your Tronxy, is just double check to make sure that these are actually screwed in. The uh, the grub screws are tightened because mine weren't. And as you saw, I just literally pulled it out. So instead of using that hot end, I literally just put the hot end back on that I had purchased with the V6 kit. Uh, off of Amazon. I think I got it for under 20 bucks. Um, so now I'm attaching the heater core and the thermostat to the hot end, the V6 hot end and the heat block. So now that it's attached, let's put it aside and I'm going to look at the mounting plate. 
I do want to just, um, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to just adjust the eccentric nut on the back just to make sure there's no wobble or anything on the plate. There are two offsets, the brass, that need to be removed before we can start mounting the V6 um, printed parts. Those are all off. So here is the back plate for the V6 mounting part. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pull the M3 nuts into the mounting bracket, just like I'm doing here. So you want to pull those nuts straight through on both sides so that they're, um, they're countersunk into the plastic. And once you do that, then you can just, uh, we, I just pull them through with a different nut and then I just remove them like so. And we have a perfectly countersunk ready to go nut ready to screw in for the next part. Now this will just hang off the back of the base plate. It does go slightly off center. You will notice on the back of the printed part, there is a, a notch for the uh, wheel screw which is right, as I'm pointing out, right here in the video. And so that's just going to sit on there. Um, and that's basically your guide to where to mount this properly. Um, you are going to install, I believe, their M38s here in order to install the, um, the plate flush and secure to the, um, to the back bracket. Now, these were a little bit finicky. Um, they didn't quite line up perfectly. I had to, to slightly drill out the plastic a little bit to get them to go, but I did print in PET-G, so sometimes you do have to clean out those holes. Now I have the hot end mounted, and I am just putting the uh, cover plate on. It actually snaps right on, nice and snug to the heat sink of the V6. I did take the time to make sure my heater block at the base was um, basically at a, a 0 180 degree angle so it was flush straight back and forth instead of slightly twisted as you can see there. Uh, and then I basically took, I believe they were uh, M312s and I screwed in this front plate. Now you want to make sure these are countersunk slightly because you're going to put the fan over it. But now I am working on the blower fan. Um, I can't see too well from this side, but the nice thing about these printed parts is there's actually um, almost tongue and groove on the printed parts and the brackets for the fan and for the leveling sensor so that they do slide in quite nicely. Now, as you can see, that the blower fan does adjust upwards and downwards. So you um, want to just sort of screw it on here but you don't want to tighten it snugly as of yet because you do want to adjust it so it's blowing on your nozzle and not onto your heater block. So with the blower fan on now it's time for the hot end fan to be screwed onto. Now you want to make sure this is blowing towards your hot end and usually with these fans there'll be a sticker on one side that's technically the side that it blows towards so you want your sticker facing your hot end usually but always double check and just make sure it's blowing towards your hot end that will give you optimum cooling in my opinion i know some people tend to pull the hot air out i like to blow it onto it so now that that's done i'm going to um, just trim off the burnt part of my bowden tube here just to make sure that it's um you want to make sure it's nice and level and flat. You don't want to cut this on an angle because you want it to sit flush on your 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 all metal throat. So I'm just taking my time now. I've inserted the boat in all the way flush, and basically what you want it a trick I use is with the coupler is I'll loosen it like half a turn. Put the Bowden tube all the way down till it's flush and then tighten it. That way I get a nice secure seal. So now that I have that done and I've attached the leveling sensor, I'm just basically adding some zip ties at this point in time um, in order to do some wire management.
Over here now I have the hot end heated because I do need to snug it all together. I heat it up usually at about like 240 or so for all, all metal. And then I'm just going to tighten the, the nozzle on just to make sure I have a nice seal and I don't leak any filament. I'm just roughly giving myself an eyeball level here and then I think I'll be pretty much good to go. Okay, so while it's not perfect, it's a lot better than it was before. So the belt actually, you have to play around with this part here and get this just right, not too tight, not too loose. Um, and the way it runs in the channels, I'm really not a fan of this. It's just basically a very cheap, noisy belt. So I'll end up replacing this at some point in time. Okay, so I've done the hardware modifications. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into front interface and I'm going to connect to my trunk C. Um, I'm going to do an M503 to get the stats from it. Once we did our M503, we're going to find our PDI values, which are right here. Okay, now I'm going to run a PDI test and we're going to adjust these values because we changed the hot end. It's going to help regulate the heat. So we're going to do um, an M303 and that's going to tell it to do the PDI tune. We're going to do it on the extruder zero, which is our main extruder. We're going to set the temperature to 200 because we're going to do it for PLA because that's basically what I print with. Um, now we're going to do three cycles. So you're going to do C3. So we're going to run this and it's going to run three cycles. And once it's run its three cycles, then we're going to um, input these. Our PDI test is now finished. So let's run these. So in order to do this, we're going to go M301. And we're going to set our, um, our P value is 21.9. Our I value is 1.82. And our D value is 65.08. Um, I've sent that. We're going to do an M503. All right, and 1.82, let's just double check on that, make sure she saved properly. 1.82, 65.08, perfect. So then we're gonna go M500 to save. Oh, hang on, M500 to save. So now that's saved to EEPROM. So I, what I've done is I have managed to um, put the V6 in, uh, and I'm gonna start a new profile. But I'm not really going to start a new profile. What I'm going to do is, this is Prusa Slicer 2.3.0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this Ender 3v2 profile. And I'm going to use this as my base. So I got the, the Ender profile. We're going to find, um, let's just go generic PLA for now, because that's what I'm going to be printing in. And let's do 1.6 mil, okay? So now the ender does not have um, auto leveling on it. Oh, the retraction is quite uh, big too, so five mils. Um, I'll make a change here. I'm gonna go to four, just to see. I rather have less retraction and more stringing and bump it up later. Um, and then let's go to custom G codes. Oops. So, uh, coordinates, relative mode, we're heating up, we're heating up, we're, we're homing all. So right after this G28, I'm going to put a G29 in. That's going to get the auto level going. And then we're going to, um, do an intro line. Yeah. Okay. So I think pretty much that's all I'm going to do as far as the printer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, oh, hang on. I hit the wrong button, sorry. I'm going to save this as, uh, we're going to call this the Tronxy XY2 uh, V6 profile. All right. So I have that. Let's have a look at our filament settings. Ooh, that's not this printer. Okay. <laughs> um, 
generic PLA for Creality 210.205. We'll give that a whirl. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, we're going, what do we say, 1.6 for optimal? So there's 1.6. Let's just check out our speeds and stuff. It is a little slow, but we'll boost that up in a later. Let's just um, start slow and work our way up. So let's slice Dr. Stephen Strange here. And this will be the uh, print that I'm running. Actually, 20% info. I don't think I need 20%. I probably can get away with 10. Let's just do 10% info here. So this is a 7-hour print. It's a no-support print. Um, we're going to save that to our USB stick and, or our SD card, and then we're going to go. But that's basically how you start to make a profile. And that's all I'm going to do. And then I have a look at this print, and I'm going to tweak it, and so on and so forth. All right, well, that printed overnight. Let's have a look at Dr. Strange here. Let's see here, can we focus? There we go. He doesn't look too bad at all. I got a little bit of um, Z-banding, but I don't actually think that's um, Z-banding. I think that's just one of my settings in my slicer that I have to adjust. Um, but for a first print with the new hot end without even tuning a profile, I think he looks pretty good. So I think I do have to adjust a few things, obviously, but overall, I think Dr. Strange does not look strange at all. So there it is. Um, I managed to successfully upgrade my Tronxy to um, a V6 hot end. Overall, it didn't do too bad at all. So with a first print with a brand new slicer profile in Prusa Slicer that I've been trying out, um, it seems to be doing okay. Um, there will be a little bit of fine tuning, but uh, I would say that's a successful upgrade. Okay. So if you like this video, if you like what I'm doing, leave a thumbs up. Um, thanks everybody for watching these videos and thank you everyone for helping me grow this channel. I do appreciate that. Um, and until next time, peace out.